Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is going to be a general reading for the collective regarding Venus and Mercury and Sagittarius. So we have a lot of Sag energy. We are um, coming up on Sagittarius season. We're going to have a new moon in Sagittarius on the 23rd of November. And as I'm recording this, Venus and Mercury have already transited into the sign of, um, of Sag. So this new moon is really flavored by Venus and Mercury, but also its ruling planet Jupiter, which is stationing direct on the same day of the new moon. He is retrograding right now in Pisces. He is going to stage, station direct in Pisces and ultimately move back into Aries, um, I believe later in December. Don't have an exact date. So whenever there's a new moon or a full moon, whatever sign it's in, um, it's always going to be flavored by the ruling planet. Wherever that ruling planet is, whatever it's doing, whatever it's aspecting, it's going to, again, give a, um, you know, a theme or it's going to really blanket it with the energies of what's happening with the ruling planet. So before we dive into it, for those of you who are current subscribers, thank you so much for supporting me and joining me as I do these readings. And for those of you who are new, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Karen Michelle Yearwood. I'm an intuitive guidance counselor, and I help people like you along the ascension journey. So Sagittarius energy. Sag, you're one of my favorite signs. I love you. <laughs> I have my Venus in the ninth house, the house of Sagittarius, but I don't have any personal planets in Sag. So let's see what's coming through here with this Sagittarius energy. Intuitively, I'm getting um, energies around conversations that are very candid. So um, one of the uh, really big characteristics of uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius is truth, right? Higher truth, finding the higher mind, tapping into your higher consciousness. Um, and in this case, because Mercury is um, transiting through Sagittarius, it is communication, right? And we have that Venusian energy as well. Um, Venus being, you know, beloved planet, right? Connecting commitments, partnerships. So there could be conversations coming up around things that um, could be difficult to talk about, but need to be spoken about um, and, and need to be done so in a very truthful way, in a very uh, transparent way. So we are moving out of Scorpio season and we had those eclipses, you know, over the past month, really heavy energy. I think, you know, a lot of that energy is going to be loosening up, lightening up, I should say. Again, look at your personal chart. What house is Sagittarius occupying? What house is uh, Pisces occupying? That's where Jupiter is transiting. We also have Saturn direct in Aquarius, right? And Saturn's, you know, moving on like as of, I think, spring of next year, he'll be in Pisces. You know, we're going to, again, we're going to uh, eventually see a little bit more, uh, less intense energies in the sky, at least I think, you know, personally and intuitively. But right now, you know, since this is for like the Sag and um, Venus and Mercury in Sag, I'll do a separate reading for the new moon. But, you know, I just brought that up because um, this transit is going to affect that new moon. Um, you know, let's see what's going on here in terms of a conversation or we have the sixth house. That's the first card that flipped out. I'm using my astrology cards, my astrology reading cards. Oops. The sixth house. Now, this is the house of Virgo, but many of you could have uh, personal planets in the sixth house. You could have Sagittarius in your sixth house, um, Pisces in the sixth, maybe. Um, so this is about your health and wellness. This is about your routines. Um, you know, maybe there is something you need to let, um, you know, maybe a manager know or people you work with about getting back to you, right? Focusing more on you, uh, pouring more into your um, physical health, your wellness, needing a break, needing to rest, um, needing just more space. I think this is more about pouring into yourself. Um, not necessarily that, you know, working with others or doing what you're doing is a problem, but again, it is maybe um, a time where you're feeling like a little bit um, overworked or a little bit tired. You know, we are coming up on the end of the calendar year. We're really approaching the holiday season here. So, and again, that could be very, um, uh, could be overwhelming for some people. So the six houses here, let's see what else we have. Oops, almost dropped the whole deck. <laughs> let's see what else we have. Um, Aquarius. <clears throat> Aquarius, you, um, that, that energy, not you, this isn't an Aquarius reading, but the um, aqua energy pairs really well with Sagittarius. Sagittarius um, and Aquarius are like 
two soulmate energies. But anyway, look and see in your chart where you have Aquarius energy. Like I mentioned, Saturn is transiting through Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is making a square to Taurus and Scorpio where the nodes are sitting. Um, it's also opposing Leo. So um, again, look at your chart. This could this new moon could be um, activating parts of wherever you have Aquarius um, or your um, your personal planets in Aquarius, right? It could be um, triggered some way by this uh, transit. Maybe you have, for example, maybe you have like your natal Venus in Aquarius or your natal Mercury in Aquarius. But the energies of um, Aqua, you know, it's the 11th house. Um, it's also about progression, right? The future, advancing. So there could be things coming up in your future um, relating that are, or actually, sorry, I, I just got something different, that are going to be triggered by whatever conversation that comes up. So, you know, it could be moving, it could be um, taking on a new position, um, getting promoted, um, rebranding yourself, new creations, right? Because it does oppose Leo. So it's like um, a little bit of that creativity as well. And then we have Neptune. Neptune is sitting in Pisces as well. All right, the Neptunian energy. I believe Neptune is retrograde. I'm not sure when she goes direct. But this is really um, similar to Jupiter. You know, it's about accessing higher self, right? Something that's bigger than you. Um, so many of you could be working on your manifestations, you know, manifestations around your home. The bottom of the deck is the fourth house, the house of cancer. Okay. So it's like your stability, right? Your heritage as well. Um, maybe much of what the, um, the uh, routines are around is wanting more stability at home, right? Wanting more time at home, wanting a more comfortable home, um, or just, again, it, it could be like something is changing in the home, right? Because of, uh, all of the, um, aspects to the nodes, excuse me. Yeah. Aspects to the North node and Taurus, South node and Scorpio. So that could be coming up as well. So let's get the tarot. Um, let me see what tarot deck I want to use for you guys today. Um, Let's use my Souls on Fire deck. Souls on Fire. So let's get a three card spread. You know, that's my go to for many of the readings. So let's get um, current situation, obstacle, and advice. What's the current situation going on for this Venus transit? I almost have the Eight of Pentacles flip. That's Virgo energy. That's work. Um, this Venus, Mercury transit, and Sagittarius. This Jupiterian energy. <laughs> Jupiter, here he is. The Wheel of Fortune. So I always say when the energy of the reading comes out in the card, it's going to be pretty loud. So the Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, represents Jupiter. And Jupiter is well aspected right now. Um, Jupiter rules Pisces as well. Pisces is the fe the feminine energy, um, ancient ruler, right, of Pisces. Um, the modern ruler is Neptune, right? So we have some Neptu uh, some Piscean energy kind of coming through the reading indirectly here. But current situation is around Wheel of Fortune, right? So going back to what I was saying about that sixth house, pouring into yourself, giving yourself a break, resting. This could be the ticket to manifesting, right, to more abundance. Um, to allow yourself to to receive, right? Oftentimes, you know, blockages happen because we are overworked, because we're not resting, because we're not paying attention to our needs. So this coming out in the current situation, this is actually beautiful because um, I think with this transit, right, coming out of Scorpio season, getting a little bit further out of the eclipses, um, there's going to be a like lighter energy, which um, kind of frees us up energetically, right? In um, spiritually i guess you could say maybe physically as well physically as well since the sixth house is like a physical um it's a physical house yeah very earth grounded um what's the uh obstacle two of swords yeah so lack of clarity two of swords is not really seeing things for what it um for what it is and i think that with the sun moving into sagittarius this is going to be a great season for clarity to come through, whether you seek it yourself or spirit brings it to you, you know, the answers you need. Um, and this could be within yourself or relating to people around you. Anyone that's trying to pull the wool over your eyes or trying to be deceptive, um, naysayers, you know, maybe people talking behind your back, that kind of thing. 
I'm honestly not getting a low vibrational energy overall, but again, um, depending on what this aspects in your chart, um, this could be one of the things that the conversation is about. Remember I was, I was channeling like conversations, difficult conversations, candidness. It could be something like that, right? Maybe something was said about you to someone else. You know how it goes, right? Gossip, grapevine kind of a thing. And now it's like getting to the bottom of it, right? Getting out of this two of swords, making a decision, seeing things for what it is. Um, you know, maybe someone who again has been um, presenting themselves as one thing, but they're really another. Those kind of um, uh, topics and situations could come up at this time and it's in the obstacle position. So it's something that has to be resolved. What is the advice from spirit? advice from spirit the magician here's mercury energy so both jupiter and mercury are showing up in the reading um and this is you know definitely what i'm channeling for so the magician rules both virgo and gemini so mercury is actually dehabilitated he's in his fall right now because mercury rules gemini and virgo gemini is the opposite sign to sag so mercury is sitting in sag right now so he's not very strong um however that doesn't mean that great things can't come about with a placement or um, with a transit, um, Mercury and Sad, especially conjoined with Venus. And also because the ruling planet of Sad is well aspected right now. So typically with Mercury and Sag, it's a distracting energy. Um, Mercury and Sag can get very um, thrown off course very easily, or it can lose track. It can not be well organized or uh, well poised. But with the Venusian energy, the well-aspected Jupiter, um, I think, and it's coming out with the advice, I think this is really spirit saying like, you know, keep going, stay the course, you're manifesting accurately, right? I, I shouldn't say accurately, right? It's no way to wrongly manifest, but you're manifesting in alignment with what it is you want to bring to fruition. Um, and you have the power, you have the tools around you to bring into your life what it is you really want, right? So with this Neptunian energy, the Magician energy, um, Venusian energy, um, Jupiter and Pisces, very, very benefic, very um, serendipitous, okay? Uh, this is a great way to also set your intentions. So new moons are, are typically about setting your intentions, all right? So on that new moon, the 23rd of November, you know, write it down. You know, maybe if you are a little... Um, uh, what's the word like your, your brain's a little bit overworked sit down and make a list you know and it could be a short list whatever works for you um, and and kind of just let it go you know release it you know um, you know burn your incense with it burn your candles with it pray over it and I think this is what spirit is saying in terms of getting the clarity you need um, also asking for support and guidance to show up with as much love as possible with as much compassion in terms of whatever conversation that you need to have with someone, um, your internal dialogue. Yeah, bottom of the deck, page of cups. You know, it's like a small love offer or, you know, an apology or, you know, a olive branch. That kind of energy could be coming in right now. It's at the top. The top is the moon. Yeah, so and we are talking about a new moon, but here's more Piscean energy. I oftentimes look at the top of the deck bottom of the deck and then I sometimes cut the deck too while oh, we have three of swords in the middle so there's a heartbreak energy or a chance to forgive three of swords can also be a chance to forgive a chance to heal so with this beautiful transit um this uh Venusian mercurial energy and Sag Jupiter well aspected and Pisces going direct on the same day as the new moon I think that this is a great opportunity to really clear the energy clear the air regarding something that has been um, an obstacle or something that has been maybe kept secret or, um, you know, uh, left unexplained, right? That there's that kind of energy I'm getting. So I want to get some oracles for you to um, leave off the reading. Let's get some from the Enchanted Map. Um, so my information is down below if you'd like a personal reading. Um, for Black Friday, I will be doing a special. I haven't... Um, I haven't typed it out yet, but by the time this video is posted, you'll see it in the in the notes below. Um, so that is available to you. Um, just send me an email. If this is your kind of thing, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, let me know in the comments how this energy is working out for you. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right. Intention. 22 
and 22 is an angel number, right? It's a repeating number, and that beautiful owl up there, the wise owl, holding this, um, I forgot what they're called. Are they dandelions? Or they turn into dandelions, I think. Anyway, intention. So setting your intention here, right? Perfect for new moon energies. Um, making a wish. You know, I think this is very much make a wish energy with Jupiter being a great benefic, even Neptune as well. I mean, oftentimes you'll hear readers say Neptune is like about illusions or the dream world, but because of what else is happening um, in the sky with the luminaries, I think that this Neptunian energy in Pisces really, really can help boost whatever it is you set your intention on or ask for for the universe. Um, rock bottom, it's a number 10. Okay, so maybe some of you feel like you're rock bottom or maybe this is a part of where the two of swords is coming in, the wheel of fortune, why you need to work on health and wellness, uh, maybe streamlining your schedule a little bit more. It's just maybe evoking a sense of being in rock bottom. I don't think any of you are actually there but it could be that you're kind of being run rugged a little bit. You know, it is a 10, tens are culminations and ends of cycles. So something really needs to close out and wrap up at this time. And then protecting treasure. It's a 39 that reduces to a 12 and then a three. Okay, so three is also for me, balance of mind, body, and spirit, right? Connecting to source as well. Protecting treasure. So protecting what you have already earned, um, protecting like your, your space, maybe your home, your possession, your assets, bottom of the deck, follow the leader, follow the leader. So you could be receiving wise counsel for someone. Um, maybe you go to someone and ask about how you're going to approach this topic, have this conversation with someone. Um, and, and again, like coming to the table with complete honesty, transparency, and compassion is definitely the way to go with this energy. It's going to be well supported by the universe. Okay. So you guys, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Again, if this is your kind of thing, subscribe if you haven't already. I'd, pre I'd appreciate it. Um, like the video if something here has resonated, even just a piece of it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Be sure to thrive. Bye.